Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome you back to our North America Pack DLC showcase for Planet Zoo. Today's enclosure and time lapse is a little different from pretty much every single one we've done for this DLC so far. I would say they've all kind of been culturally inclined. We've had, you know, various representations of uh, indigenous stories. We've had various representations of uh, quote unquote Canadiana. Um, so what we're doing today is a departure from that. Not only because the animal itself is a departure from Canada, we are going to an animal here that is exclusively found in the United States and Mexico, but also because I have, I guess, this image in my head whenever I think about the American alligator, and that is the image of the bayou. There's something about it that I've always found to be charming, um, cozy almost, even in like this might sound a little strange, but even in like dilapidated and abandoned structures, you know, by the water, even with like the sort of muddy look of the water, there, there's something about it that just feels so, I, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't know if cozy is the right word, but, but cozy is what I'm going to go with. It also to me feels very iconic. Anytime again, uh, in case I didn't make this clear, just literally 30 seconds ago, Anytime I think about the American alligator, I have the image of, you know, the kind of muddy brownish water, the uh, kind of run down looking uh, cottage that has like a deck or whatever, the overhanging vegetation, that, and that's what I wanted to build. Um, it might sound a little pop culture, I guess, but I, I think it's relatively accurate as well. And I, I really wanted to challenge myself to, to build something like that. and. Uh, well, I'm pretty pleased with how it all comes together. Now, before we move any further, I just want to mention really quickly, I do apologize for the delay in today's episode release. Um, those of you that follow me on Twitter will know why it happened. If you don't follow me on Twitter, if you have a Twitter account, uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Link is in the description down below. I post all updates to schedule uh, on that Twitter account. I, I post other things as well, pictures of my pet rabbit, a life is going in general, good times, uh, but also updates to uh, scheduling based on, you know, emergencies or changes or whatever it might be. And uh, I don't want to belabor it, but wasn't feeling 100% today. <laughs> and uh, because of things that were out of my control, I wasn't able to record this session until it was already um, today. <laughs> so it was, it was late. Uh, but I wanted to get an episode out. I, I wanted to get an episode out. I hate skipping episodes. I hate skipping... Like, I just hate breaking the schedule in general. It bothers me. I don't like letting people down. So I wanted to get an episode out and I, you know, was hit by inspiration. I was hit by what I thought would be quite a challenge to execute as well. I wasn't sure if, you know, the game had the right pieces and stuff like that. So uh, I was excited to, to, to execute and I wanted to make sure we got an episode out. So I do apologize that it's late, but I do hope you enjoy it nonetheless. Uh, and again, if you do, don't hesitate to leave a like and a comment down below. It does really make a big difference in just letting me know what people want to see on the channel. Uh, and how I should approach things on the channel as well. So go ahead and uh, let me know down below. Leave a like, leave a comment. It does make a big difference. Sorry, back to it though. Um, again, I was of course using reference imagery. Uh, I, I I have an image in my head, but it's not uh, the most vivid when it comes to like the actual buildings and stuff themselves. Uh, so I wanted to look up some 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 reference imagery, and so I found a lot of like corrugated sheets and and, and corrugated uh, you know like ram like I guess ramshackle housing and stuff like that, which I which is what I was envisioning. I just had to kind of make sure that my what I had in my head was actually realistic and not tainted by Hollywood, I guess, you know? Um, but it, it, it does exist. It is a real thing. And so I was able to kind of like borrow inspiration and, and, and replicate uh, what I saw. And uh, yeah, it, it, feels, it feels right. I mean, again, I am limited by the pieces of the game, but I feel like for the most part, they actually work with us. All the, the corrugated pieces work uh, quite nicely. And uh, rather than putting down... Uh, I guess these would be Adirondacks. I'm so used to calling them Muskokas, um, Muskoka chairs. Uh, but because there aren't any Muskoka chairs or Adirondacks in this game, I, I just put down another regular bench um, to, to kind of represent the, uh, what do you call it? Like the, the, the deck chair, I guess. There's no deck chairs in the game either. Um, but yeah, so I, I enjoyed that. And then I wanted to do um, another key element of this kind of uh, space for me is the lighting. 
it's dense vegetation. It's really dark at night. You can see the stars because you're kind of like in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but there are, there are just like tiny little lights and like string lights. I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of string lights, uh, just in like in, in general as well. And so I thought like, yeah, why don't we go ahead and try and light this space up? We haven't really built any of these spaces for uh, nighttime viewing so far, not with this enclosure. Oh, sorry, not with uh, this DLC pack and not with any of the DLC that came before either. I don't think we've focused around um, lighting. So I thought that would be nice. That would be, be different for uh, for this enclosure. Uh, it would help it stand out a little bit. So I thought we'd, uh, we'd do that and uh, oh, the uh, end results. I mean, you'll see it. I'm really pleased. I I, I, I I really quite like this enclosure and, and uh, I do hope you like it as well because it's, it, I, I would say it's different from anything we've done. Anything I've done, I mean. Um, and uh, and it's, it's got its charm. It's got that charm that I was hoping for and it does make me very happy. Uh, here we're going to duplicate and, and flip this thing around, make a couple of adjustments so it doesn't feel like cookie cutter. But the idea was that the uh, guests would be in one, you know, they can grab food and drink and, and that would be where they kind of stand and sit to view the animals. But on the flip side over here, we'd actually get the alligators perhaps resting in here if necessary. You know, if they needed hard shelter, then they've got some over here if they want to hide from, I don't know, the rain or something, I guess. Um, it, it also brings more life to the space as well. It kind of like breaks up the terrain, breaks up the pattern and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to make sure we got that as well. Uh, just reducing the, the density of the, um, the water a bit so that you can actually see underneath it as dirty as it is. But apart from that, yeah, placing a couple things down and then the vegetation. Once the vegetation comes in, it feels like exactly what I wanted to do. Shortly after the uh, the time lapse as well, you'll see me add a bit more vegetation because I, I found found a couple of gaps after the time lapse was done. But uh, really pleased with how this comes together. Now, you'll actually notice I have grassland checked over here and you'll see this revelation happen after the time lapse as well. But <laughs> they're not grassland animals. They're they're it's temperate. They're temperate animals. Fortunately, though, the uh, main bit of vegetation over here, the willow tree, is uh, both grassland and temperate uh, bit of vegetation. So it worked out. The funny thing is, like, visually, it, it matched what I had in my head. Visually, it was like, oh, yeah, you know, this is the kind of overhanging vegetation I think about when I think about the uh, uh, alligators. So it, it, you know, it checked that box for me, and I didn't, like, hesitate or double check or anything like that. And fortunately, you know, my the visual in my head was right and it actually does end up uh matching up and 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 working out but yeah i'm just so pleased like this is exactly what i wanted and it's not often i get to say that about uh, these uh, these time lapses because oftentimes i have to go in and i have to adjust my plan because you know the pieces just aren't there uh, or or what have you but this is this is pretty much exactly what i was hoping for the overhanging and the, the oh my god it's just so i'm very pleased i'm very pleased and you'll see it i'm gonna turn the lights down because we're in sandbox mode so we have control over time of day i'm going to turn it to uh to nighttime and you'll see the lights oh my god it makes me so happy i'm very pleased with this and i hope you guys uh, are as well but uh that is pretty much it for this time lapse uh, we're going to see the uh, alligators come through and see how they interact with the space of course and we'll take a look at them during the day and during the night as well but for now back to regular speed all right folks we are back from the time lapse and i'm really pleased with this space I had, uh, I mean, I, 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 I wasn't sure how this was going to work out. I was, uh, that's the only way I can put it. I wasn't sure if this was going to work out. I wasn't sure how many uh, pieces we had to play with. I wasn't sure how the lighting was going to look. I wasn't sure about, I mean, anything, <laughs> really. I just kind of went in um, on this one with this, like, vague idea of, of, with this vague visual, I guess, in my head, I did a bit of research. I, I looked up some uh, some references, but those of you that are familiar with uh, with my typical approach and my my um, my my usual mo, I guess you'll you'll maybe already be aware of what I was nervous about. As far as you know, I, I have grand visions, and then I come through into the game, and sometimes the pieces aren't available as needed, and then those visions uh, we we managed to make them work anyway i modify them on route and i had to do a bit of that for this uh for this uh enclosure as well uh but uh but but this time i was able to stick a bit closer to my well, what i had in mind than i anticipated going into uh to to you know while investigating all the building pieces and stuff i i'm really quite pleased with this space i mean one thing i will say i was hoping for was uh, more variety in vegetation we kind of have just a handful of options for uh for 
grassland trees apparently i didn't realize how, how limited our options would be i'm actually thrown off by that but uh now that i think about it actually now that i say it out loud i believe that's been one of our struggles quite a few times every time we've had a grassland only animal i've been like well, how am I supposed to fill the space up? <laughs> this time, fortunately, we have a, a body of water that we can use. We've got some of these, um, like, we've, we've got we've got some variety. We've got uh, some interesting lighting and stuff going on as well. I'm really pleased with how this is looking. This, I, I think this is what uh, sort of seals the deal for me, is that the lighting actually worked out how I'd kind of seen it in my head. Um, for me, that's like the, that's what, that's what kind of brought it all together for me. I don't know how y'all feel. I just, I don't know. There's something about, look at that. See the stars in the sky, you've got this like light, nice like lighting going on down over here. Oh my god. Absolutely love it. I love it by I love it by night. I like it by day as well, but by night this is a, a really special space and I wanted to uh highlight that. Avert your eyes, it's gonna get real bright real fast. So uh you know look look elsewhere because I'm pretty sure it's gonna be blindingly blindingly bright. Uh so heads up before I click on that. Oh my god, my eyes all right, we're good. We're back now. Um, but yeah, I mean, during during the day as well, I, I quite like how it looks. It has kind of exactly the feel I was going for. You know, I could actually add some more trees around some of the uh, uh, some of the some of the construction like spots over here. Uh, come on now. I wish it would auto snap. There was like an auto snap to ground option. Oh, but yeah, I could densely make this a bit more densely packed, I guess. That was the only thing that I felt uh, I would have liked is a bit more, I guess, variety. Uh, I understand there only being so many like breeds of trees or species of trees, I guess, but uh, it would have been nice to have uh, different, more different shapes. Because I mean, again, if you if you're familiar with the imagery I was talking about, I'm sure during the uh, the time lapse, then you'll know exactly what I'm kind of like hoping for or going for is like all those really low hanging, you know, uh, leaves and stuff, very densely green, close to the water, and and we've managed to accomplish that fairly well, I would say, uh, for the most part. But the uh, the only like issue I have, quote unquote, is that from up on high, you can kind of see the repetition, you can see the tiling. And again, I'm not the I'm not the biggest fan of, of when you can tell something's been uh, repeated uh, over and over. I'm not the biggest fan of tiling. Same thing over here, a lot of tiling. I, I wish that's a that's a limitation of the game, right? I, I wish there was more uh, we could do about that. And I wish there were more options uh, to, to, to really densely pack this space and, and get that look we were going for. But I, I am happy with the uh, the overall look. In fact, what we can probably do is we can probably add some reeds and stuff as well um, to like further like densely vegetate and populate the... Uh... Yeah, there we go. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased with this. By day and by night, I'm really happy with how this space looks. But enough uh, gawking over our work from the time lapse. I like to do that really quickly because I think it's a... Uh, just in case you miss something during the time lapse, you can actually see it properly. You know, like you might have missed me putting down some of these stores over here. You might have missed the uh, little benches over here and uh, actually across over here as well. You know, some some sitting spots over here. You might have missed the lights, uh, though, of course, with the amount of time we spent uh, in the darkness right after the time lapse, that would have been nearly impossible. But uh, I, I just want to highlight a couple of the little details that I thought were, were quite nifty. I do hope to see some of the gators like lie down over here as well as over here. It'd be nice to see them kind of exposed out over here so that guests that are you know, here to watch can actually maybe see them. That would be nice. We'll see how they behave. But but I digress. Again, getting distracted by uh, talking about the space. I'm really quite pleased with it. <laughs> really quite pleased with it. As, as nervous as I was going in, I wasn't sure if we were going to get what I wanted. So to get what I wanted uh, without having to adjust too much, like I was saying, it just it, uh, it feels good, you know? It feels good to... feels good. All right. Let's talk about the American alligator. Alligator, oh dear, <laughs> Mississippiensis. Mississippiensis. There we go. Alligator Mississippiensis. Man, jeez, oh, <laughs> that's a that's a word. I mean, I, I get I get I get where I get like the root of it and everything. I understand where it comes from, but like Mississippi itself is such a word. Now yeah tack on some more letters to the end of it. Jeez. Least concern, like basically all of the animals in this North America pack DLC, I feel like population in wild is 5 million. The American alligator is a large species of crocodilian that lives in the rivers, swamps, marshes, and wetlands of the southern USA and Mexico. American alligators may be dark green, brown, or gray in color. They have a broad rounded head with a large gape and many teeth, of which some can be seen protruding externally. The body of the American alligator is broad, with several raised ridges of scales running down their back. Their legs stick out laterally, and they move close to the ground, but will raise themselves off the ground when running. 
yeah, it's a terrifying sight when they when they run. If I've got it right in my head, it's a terrifying sight. Male American alligators measure 11 to 15 feet in length and weigh 200 to 1,377 pounds. Females measure 8.5 to 9.9 feet in length and weigh 66 to 440 pounds. Wow, that weight difference is insanity. That's a that's a three times weight difference potentially. Oh my. American alligators continue growing throughout their lives so can reach very large sizes. They're not endangered and there are estimated to be 5 million American alligators in the wild. And I'm, I'm assuming then that these are the largest animals we've seen and that's why that's the number they've gone with over here because uh, you know, if, 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 they, if they continue growing throughout their lives then uh, like I, I imagine the largest measured or maybe the largest measured average, you know, so so you're not giving us the extremes. I don't know, but uh, that's, uh, that's those are some impressive numbers. <laughs> those are some impressive numbers. All right, natural habitat right across the bottom over here. Uh, got some interesting insight, by the way, about the uh, cougars in Florida. <laughs> that sounds funny out of context. Um, but yes, the, the, the cougars in Florida, uh, the, the, the cougar episode has some interesting insights in the comments with regards to cougars in Florida. Uh, I highly advise if you're curious about that conversation, you do check it out in the comments of that episode. I would get sidetracked for, for, for like an hour if I start to kind of dig in deep uh, into it, but, uh, but definitely worth, uh, worth checking out. As far as the requirements of the American alligator though, we've got uh, not, not too much space. I was actually worried. I did very quickly check during the uh, time lapse. Um, oh God, oh no. Oh no, I think I made a horrible mistake. Oh, I might have made a horrible mistake. <laughs> That's what I get for being pleased with the uh, with the enclosure. Temperate, not grassland. Oh man. That's hilarious. How can I how can I check and then still make a mistake? Well, you know what? I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. I hope so at least. Oh, hello. Palm trees. I mean, we could if we if we if we have to change the vegetation around over here, we can do that. Oh, you know what? Beautiful. I was just like, okay, I'm glad the, uh, the the weeping willow is an option over here as well because I look at these trees and I go, but this looks right. That's why I didn't stop. See, if, if all I got were things like the Virginia creeper and stuff, I'd be like, you know, this doesn't look right. Of all the footage I've seen in my life about, you know, the alligator and, and where they live and stuff, I'd be like, mm, this stuff, this, uh, this doesn't like look right. And, and, and I, I would have stopped, but you know, funnily enough, this stuff would have looked right. So that's, that's, you know, learn something new every day, right? But, uh, but what's even funnier to me is that I, I lo looked at the Weeping Willow and I was like, no, but this looks correct based on what I've seen throughout my life on like TV and stuff, you know, through documentaries and, 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 and movies and TV shows and all that. And so I just went with it and I didn't even realize that I had the wrong biome selected. But hey, lo and behold, it is temperate and aquatic, not grassland and aquatic as I had. But again, fortunately, the uh, Weeping Willow at least is... is, is both temperate and grassland. Oh, that would have been that would have been rough. That would have been rough. Uh, but anyway, yeah, they don't actually need uh, deep water, which is, I, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Anytime I see an animal that has the uh, underwater feeders, I naturally assume that they're going to want the deep water, um, like a little bit of deep water as well. But I, I guess not. I'm sure we have plenty of water and land here. I'm sure we are well over uh, what these guys need, so we'll be we'll be fine. Um, but uh, let's move on to the species data. Group size, one to six, up to one male, up to five females. Male bachelor group size and female bachelor group sizes are both one to six. Interesting. Dominance, males are territorial. Mating system is promiscuous and relation with humans is confident. I'm sure it is. Guests cannot enter the habitat. Size on average for males is 13.2 feet long. For females is 9.24. Life expectancy on average is 50 years across the board. These guys all live for a very long time, don't they? Like this, this general type of, 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 of animal, just, they just have really long lifespans. Uh, weight on average is 506 pounds for males, 200.2 for females. Sexual maturity is at 11 years. Wow. Sterility is at death. Number of offspring per mating event is one to four. Gestation is three months. Interbirth is 24 and reproduction in captivity is easy. Social needs. American alligators are solitary, territorial, and extremely aggressive. Males will tolerate females living on their territory, and females will look after their hatchlings for the first eight months of their life, but otherwise they spend their lives alone. Males will tolerate females living on their territory. That is an interesting, like, mentality to have, I guess. I would assume that males would invite females on their territory because that would imply that they would be able to procreate, right? But I guess not. 
Let's find out. Reproduction. Alligator males are larger than females. Yeah, I'd say. Large body size allows males to defend a large territory and attract females. Males will allow females to live on their territory, but will chase off rival males. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds... Mm, okay, that sounds a little different than tolerate. Tolerate to me sounds like begrudgingly accept, you know, like, I'd rather you not be here. Whereas allow to me is more just like, yeah, okay, you can be here because you're a female. But they chase off any males, of course. During the mating season, males will roar to attract females and intimidate rival males. If females on his territory are receptive, the male will circle them in the water before mounting. The male will grasp the female and align their clo cloacae. Clo clo cloaca? Clo hmm. How do you pronounce that? The, the plural. <laughs> and now, and now clo cloaca. Cloaca. Clo Jeez. Now that, now that like, the singular is also throwing me off. I cannot remember <laughs> this language, man. Cloaca. Cloaca. There we go. Cloaca is a singular. Cloaca. What am I saying? Cloaca. So cloaca is the plural, I guess. Anyway, copulation will then occur. After mating, the female alligator will build a nest out of mud and sticks ready to lay her eggs. The nest will be 6.5 to 9.9 .9 feet wide and 2 to 3.3 feet deep. After carrying her eggs for four to six weeks, she will lay a clutch of typically 25 to 50 eggs, although she can lay up to 90. The female will cover them in vegetation to incubate them. After 65 days, the eggs begin to hatch. The hatchlings will make high-pitched cries as they begin to break out of their eggs. The female will remove the vegetation from the top of the nest when she hears this noise to assist them in hatching. So, I'm actually curious how big they are when they hatch. I'm going to look this up afterwards. They, I, like, are they one of those animals that are like super tiny when they're born and then they grow to the, the massive sizes that we read earlier, or are they like, you know, like a like how big? Like what are they? Like like gecko size when they're born? I'm curious. I'll, I'll look it up. Yeah. Now this is interesting. I, I I anticipated this. The sex of hatchlings is determined by incubation temperature. If eggs are incubated at 82, oh god, Fahrenheit, 82 days. <laughs> Sorry, I want to know, right? I want to I actually understand what I'm reading over here. Again, like I said, pounds, I can kind of approximate, but Fahrenheit, I have, I know the formula, but like I'm, can't, I'm not going to memorize it. <laughs> um, so 27, 82 degrees Fahrenheit is 27.7 degrees Celsius and 86 degrees Fahrenheit is 30. So between 27 and 30 degrees Celsius, all eggs will be female. If they're incubated at 93 Fahrenheit or higher, which is 33 degrees Celsius, well, 33.8 degrees Celsius or higher, then all eggs will be male. But what about the, if they're between 86 Fahrenheit and 90, so in the between range, there'll be a mix. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Answered my question before I got there. That's really, that's some cool stuff. That's some cool stuff. Hatchlings will remain close to their mother for the first year of their life. Wait, hang on a second. Didn't, uh. <laughs> oh no oh those poor hatchlings i love this it's like they'll the, the hatchlings will remain with their mother for the first year of their life but the mother will only look after the hatchlings for the first eight months of their life it's just like oh man those last four months of clinginess must be really uh, sad anyway um the hatchlings will remain close to their mother for the first year of their life usually living hidden in vegetated water the mother will watch them closely and defend them at one year old the mother will start being aggressive towards her young to encourage them to disperse and become independent American alligators reach. <laughs> is I uh, terrible joke. I was gonna say that's what that's why they call them American alligators because once they reach adulthood, they want them out of the house. It's a it's a joke. It's a joke. It's a. <laughs> uh. Anyway, American alligators reach sexual maturity when they reach 1.8 meters in length and 30 kilograms in weight at around 10 to 12 years old. Male American alligators are more likely to successfully mate with females when they are larger in size because they are able to defend a territory that demonstrates their value as a mate. Now, hmm, what I'm curious about is... Is the female... Hmm, is the female... Like, so, so if the female is within a male's territory, they're not automatically receptive to that male, right? Because it says over here, um, if females on his territory are receptive. So those are two separate, um, like, check boxes, basically. So I would assume the larger the territory you have. So the larger the male is, the more territory they're able to secure because the scarier they are to all the 
uh, less, well, all the smaller uh, males, right? So they'd be less likely to challenge them for their territory. All right, so you have more territory means you're more likely to have more females in your territory. Now, are females going to that territory because there is a stronger male there, or are they ending up in that territory? Because those are two different things, right? Ending up in the territory is like because, oh, okay, well, this is the stronger male. He's expanded his territory. I've always... I've been here all my life. I'm going to stay here. It's just there's a different male, you know, that's, that's I don't know, got control over this territory now. That's one thing. Or is it like, hey, I've heard John down the river there is a particularly big alligator. I'm going to move down there and reside on his territory. Like, does the female actively pursue the, uh, the, the largest alligator in the block, so to speak? Um, I'm curious. Now, again, it's two separate checkboxes, like I was saying. So I'm inclined to say that well, it, it might be a mixed like approach, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's like, yeah, females just kind of like they end up in a male's territory. Um, and then they, depending on, I guess the male's appeal, they're either receptive or not, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. It's curious because there's a couple things going on over here. Fascinating stuff though. The, uh, the, the temperature stuff I always find fascinating when the, the temperature affects the uh the uh uh like the sex of the offspring I, I find that stuff really uh really interesting it's always interesting to me to see how that kind of stuff works across species and i, I had a feeling this would be coming so I'm, I'm i'm glad it was addressed in uh in a rather you know meaty reproduction section over here moving on to the research status we don't have any particularly special um items unfortunately it's all standard fair oh the mud bath would have been fun to include i guess maybe uh but let's see fun fact number one american alligators lose and regrow teeth throughout their lives they may go through three thousand teeth in a lifetime yeah i'm aware of this it's pretty cool it's a cool fact it's a cool fact fun fact number two american alligator blood is extremely good at fighting off bacteria meaning alligators that get seriously injured often do not get infections i did not know that that is even cooler. <laughs> I'm curious what makes them so uh, so particularly good. Like, what is it just because of the water they tend to live in? They need to be very good at fending off bacteria. That would make sense. American alligators are among the first reptile species to be observed using tools. Oh, that's terrifying. They balance branches on their heads to entice nest-building birds to come and pick them up, and they will then attack. That's even more terrifying. Not only do they use tools... They use tools for ambush tactics. Okay, kind of, uh, <laughs> kind of ironic because you know one of the most, like I would say, familiar bits of imagery of like spec ops raids and stuff that have to go through the swamp is you know putting on like an alligator, um, like sometimes to comedic effect, sometimes because it actually works, but putting on like an alligator-looking head so you can hide under the water. But ironically, alligators themselves put uh, use tools to hide under the. Anyway, I just, I just I can't I can't help myself. That's I find that funny. Uh, that's interesting though. It is it is terrifying um, in a cool sort of a way. It reminds me of the uh, the was it was it chimpanzees that uh, that would fashion spears and and set up ambushes. The first among the first reptile species to be observed using tools. That is really cool. Uh, again, terrifying, but also cool. Fun fact number four, American alligators are integral to their environment because they create alligator holes, small ponds that retain water through the dry season and provide habitats for multiple species. Oh, that's... Man, I like these fun facts. They're pretty good. Apart from the first one, which I feel like... Uh, I feel like a lot of people know that already. I could be mistaken, but that's one of those things that I've... I think like I've, I've heard quite often, fun fact number one, but the rest have been amazing. Um, that's super cool about the, uh, the, the environment thing, the, the alligator holes. Wow, okay. And fun fact number five, adult American alligators have the second strongest laboratory measured bite force, <laughs> beaten only by the saltwater crocodile. Man, and I think we have the saltwater crocs, um, I feel like, I feel like it's listed here, isn't it? No, I could be wrong. Oh, I want to know what that force is. I want to know what that force is. That's not going to be anywhere here. Look at the difference in group size, though. It's kind of... It looks so similar. You just start to think everything's going to be similar. All right, well, um... That's cool. Uh, sorry, I, I just wanted to know what the... Uh, I wanted to see if we had a reference point, at least, for what the uh, the bite force might be. But, um... Yeah, you don't want to get uh, bit by one. I think that much is, uh... 
safe to say. All right, let's go ahead and get some of these American alligators in Tanner. Uh, yeah, one male, one female. Just trying to see. Let's go with... Let's go with... Hemison here, higher fertility. Uh, and then Jazzy or Winona. Let's go with Winona. Sorry, I got I <laughs> I, I got I got stuck on Winona. I can't read the name Winona without thinking about Winona Ryder. I, I, it's like it's impossible for me, even though I believe it's spelled differently. I just it's just sorry. I have my I'm human. I have my limitations. Let's go ahead and unpause. Um, now I, now now my mind's wandering to Stranger Things. This is what happens when I record uh, super late at night or. Yeah, super late at night is when my, my brain is at the most, like, firing random thoughts, like, at 100 miles a minute. So I apologize. But hey, I wanted to make sure I got an episode out today. I do apologize for the delay in its release. I'm sure I mentioned that during the time lapse as well, though maybe now that I mentioned it now, I won't mention it when I'm recording the time lapse audio. But uh, I do apologize for the uh, delay in its release. Again, if you want to know why that happened, if you want to stay up to date with uh, scheduling changes, adjustments, or... You know, emergencies and things like that, uh, I would highly recommend following me on Twitter. It's a great place to, uh, to, 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 to keep up with not just pictures of my pet rabbit, but also with uh, just uh, how things are going, if there's going to be any changes to scheduling or anything like that. I would also mention that uh, if you don't have Twitter, because I know many people don't have Twitter, uh, if an episode is ever missing, you should still be able to see my latest tweet by just going to my, my, my Twitter account linked in the description down below. And you can see like what's going on and, and, and why there might be a delayed episode or a canceled episode or what have you. Um, sorry, a bit of a bit of a tangent there. I know, but I, I, I wanted to I wanted to share that because I, I do try to keep folks up to date. Um, I've been having <laughs> not the not the best day. I don't want to talk about it too much because I want to make it sound like a bigger deal than it actually is. But not the uh, not the best day today. Uh, but I am glad that I've started feeling a bit better and I can actually get this uh, episode done over here. I don't like uh, I don't like delaying episodes or canceling or postponing. I feel like I uh, let people down, and I I don't like that. <laughs> All right, let's get these uh, let's get these alligators in here. I'll take a minute to get them here, and I believe after this we only have two more animals to add. One is uh, the uh, sea lion, and then the uh, American bullfrog. I believe it is right. If I'm not mistaken. It is the bullfrog, American bullfrog. Yes. Such an, such, a, such an interesting little thing. All right, but yeah, we, we got to add those guys in, and I guess we'll do them both in the next episode. I've got some plans for the American Bullfrog. Almost added them this uh, episode, actually. But uh, but I think I, I'll save them for, for, for the next time. Um, where is... These guys still not moving around a lot? Some of you mentioned in your comments that, uh, you know, strangely, in, in your um, parks and stuff, in your parks, in your zoos and stuff, these guys are moving around a lot. They're super active. Some of you expressed how strange it was that they're so static in uh, in our enclosure uh this is strange all things considered as i think some of you pointed out in the comments as well all things considered this is actually one of our simpler enclosures we've made significantly more complicated ones that was the cutest walk animation god they're so cute uh we, we made significantly more complicated enclosures i mean the the, the orangutan enclosure comes to mind anytime i talk about uh, complicated enclosures I'm still surprised that the orangutan enclosure actually works at Elite Zoo North, uh, but it does. And uh, and and compared to that, compared to like 90% of my enclosures, this enclosure, the maze maze, is a uh, <laughs> very simple. It's very simple. It's like not even a fraction of uh, of com of technical complexity. It's not even like it doesn't even register. Um, do like how it looks though. Very pleased with it. Uh, okay, back over here. You are gators. Oh, there we go. Hey, buddy oh look at that size difference though wow i'm mean, like it's one thing to read it it's another thing to see it you know to like yeah to see it <laughs> all right looking good looking good uh, a little bit too much coverage not the end of the world it's not too bad it's slightly over overall pretty uh, pretty pleased though they're they're we're pretty spot on did they change how the long grass looks or something it just looks so much better these days or maybe it's just the density of it we're gonna spend some time with these animals during the day, but also during the night. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna see the space at night. I'm really pleased with how it looks in the dark, actually. Oh, you know what I should have checked is uh, 
I'm sure they can get into the water. I'm sure they can get into the water. Yeah, we're good. No escapes, they can get into the water. Good stuff. Alright, how you doing, buddy? So... Oh, I love them. They're terrifying when they run. I wonder if we'll catch them running to, like, a meal or something at one point. They are terrifying when they run. Straight to the water, I assume. Such an interesting, like, face shape. Weird, kind of flat... head right into the water. Alright, look. This is perfect. Oh, can I get the... Lotus on your, your nose? It's cute. Lotus, Lily? Um... I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take this opportunity. Are you gonna be too backlit? You are. Can I do that? Ah, see, just the lighting on the, the mud back there kind of ruins it, doesn't it? Alright. Oh, man. Just the glimmering... That's cool. That's cool. I'm really happy with this space. I'm really happy with this space. I, I wish the... I wish it wasn't so shiny. I wish it was a bit more... Like, it looks very, like, kind of, like... Not polished, because then you'd have a perfect reflection. The, the, the reflections kind of throw me off a little bit. I wish it was a bit more matte, I guess. Maybe I, I don't think I have plastic corrugated sheets. It's only the metal ones. But I really like this. I really like this. Oh man, the reflection of the lights in the water. You got stars. These reflections over here. This is... Oh man. I'm quite pleased. I am quite pleased. I hope you guys like it too. I mean, as always, I'm open to feedback. I'm always open to other people's thoughts and opinions. I can always uh, stand to improve the quality of my work, obviously. Going on up over here. Oh, was she injured, I guess? Vet came and took her away. Are the reeds? I mean, uh, like, visually this, like, it's all the notes I was hoping for, right? Like, this is, this is what I was imagining. When I think about uh, alligators, this is what I think, you know? Reeds, the, the overhanging vegetation. The kind of like muddy, mucky water. It's just everything I think about when I when I think about alligators. Really quite happy with this. Terrifying also. I'm also hoping that some of those things in there will draw guests in. Looks like looks like it's working. Great. Just floating over here. Relaxing. Wonder if we'll catch them doing anything interesting. Oh, oops, that's not what I meant. I want to see if we're expecting any offspring from an infertile alpha arctic fox over here. Not, not the biggest deal. Not the biggest deal or anything. For for the purposes of our showcase, I mean. I'm so pleased with this. Oh, look at that. Can you imagine standing up here and seeing that? Oh, come on. That's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. This is it. I'm really happy about this enclosure. Resting down over here. Oh, terrifying. That's terrifying. Oh, look at that shadow at the bottom. I... I... 
I love this enclosure. It's got so much going for it, some of it that wasn't even like planned or intentional. Hey buddy. That that shadow was really cool though. Casting right across the, the bottom over there. And this is I mean this is a, this is an experience going up over here and seeing one of these so close. Swim right under you. That is an experience. Where is the female though? Not come back yet? Hmm. What's the deal over here? Multiple animals are hungry. I really should uh, send some of these guys off. Otherwise, we're never going to see an end to these uh, notifications, I don't think. At least to the wild. Let's go. See if that does the trick. I should actually also call in the keeper urgently. Try and get some food in here. Alright. Back over. Where are we? All right, yeah. Where where is our uh, female? Being married. Okay. Oh, speak of the devil? Nope. Not not speak of the devil. Yeah, where is she? Range. This guy's just chilling over here. This reproduction in captivity is easy, right? And I was hoping to <laughs> take advantage of that. That was great. That's great. Let's go ahead and uh, make it daytime again. Avert your eyes, it will be bright. Wow, man. Alright, we're good. It just, it like, overexposes all the way to white <laughs> first, basically. There we go. There she is. She must have had like an injury or something, I guess. She's back now. Hopefully we'll see a... couple of babies. If not this session, then next, right? They re they're really lazy animals, aren't they? They just kind of like lay here. <laughs> kind of like not doing much. What about these guys? They're still stuck here. Wait, but there's more of them now. Hold on. What's going on here? You all adults? You are all adults. Not getting up to anything. What's going on? Very confusing. Very confusing. I'm, I'm not sure uh, what to do there. I'll be honest with you. Got our male over here. Where is our female? Where'd you go? Would have been nice to see them come up over here. Or like, even up over here. I'm actually curious if they actually interact with these things or not. Because they don't seem like the animals to do so. You know, they're very, again, lazy looking. Like, they, they, they don't seem very, um, well, active, for lack of a better word. What else do we have over here? Winona, where are you? Oh, there you are. Hiding in the tall grass. All right, all right. I mean, it'll take like years for them to mate at this rate <laughs> they move so slowly and this guy is just like not making any effort at all he's just like happy over here chilling just chilling folks i hope you enjoyed this session but i do think this is where we're going to go ahead and call it i had a good time with this one i had a very good time with this one i'm really pleased with how this uh, space has, uh, has turned out it's so different from again any of the other ones that we've built i was a little worried at first that i'd end up doing something that's too similar to uh some of our older spaces but no it's it's very different it reminds me of uh our southeast asia section from uh elitsu north actually funnily enough because of some of the visual i guess motifs and, and, and all that kind of stuff but uh but i'm really quite pleased with it. it it looks quite nice it's an interesting shape actually part of that happened almost entirely by accident but like as I was saying, you know, I went in with a bit of a plan and I didn't have to adjust it too much to make it happen. So 
really quite happy with this. One thing I would maybe like to do is get some of these trees like over here just to just to add a bit more. There you go. Like that. Give it a bit more life, right? From when you're like over here. Yeah, look at that. That's that's what I'm talking about. I like that quite a bit. And this space is, I mean, honestly, especially in the darkness, it looks fantastic. Really happy with it. I wonder if... I, I, I hope we get some baby alligators. But folks, like I was saying, this is where we're going to call it. I hope you had a good time. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know down below by leaving a like and a comment. As always, it makes a massive difference in how I approach content on the channel. What I do, what I don't do, how I go about doing it. Again, y'all know the drill by now, I'm sure. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.